What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Thank you so much for coming by or stopping by, I should say, uh, for another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. I'm going to show you guys a really, really cool auto tracking plugin for Final Cut Pro 10, and that's going to be the Auto Tracker 2.0 by Pixel Film Studios. So, uh, this video is actually sponsored by Pixel Film Studios, but you guys know me, I only show you guys plugins that are actually worth it and plugins that will save you money and save you time. So, you do need Final Cut Pro 10 10.4.5 and Mac OS 10.13 or higher in order for this to work. All right guys, so this is the video here that I've done with Final Cut Pro 10 using the auto tracker. And it looks so cool and it's so smooth, like I said. And you should find that plugin in the text and the generators tab or the titles and generators tab. Then you go and look for the Pixel Film Studios auto tracker 2.0. And you're gonna have three different types of titles I suppose it's quote unquote titles but that's where it's just placed you're gonna have the drop zone you're gonna have the drop zone and text and then you're gonna have the text uh, effect I, I, I should say so the drop zone allows you to pretty much add whatever image you want to track to a person a car whatever to an object that's what this one is this one is the drop zone and text so you do the image or video that can be a video as well uh, and text at the same time. And then the last one is the text, which allows you to pretty much track text only and uh, to whatever subject you want. So we're gonna do this one first. We're gonna do the drop zone. I'm not gonna get into all of these uh, or these other two um, because they follow the same, literally the, the same exact method, I suppose. So we're gonna do this one. I'm just gonna click and drag this to the beginning here because this is, I already cut the, the or I already trimmed the video down to where I want it to start the effect to start and I want it to start there and I also want it to end actually I actually want it to end right here so I'm going to uh, use a blade tool to cut this little piece here and delete the rest so we only have this piece here and we're going to be using the uh, the pink shades it's a transparent image uh, for this video just because I think it fits the vibe of these uh, of this group which I think is kind of kind of neat so what you want to do is you want to go into the inspector properties over here then you want to go into the titles by clicking on this and then it's going to take you to the published parameters which gives you a whole bunch of settings. All you got to do is go to uh, first you want to select what you want to actually track or what you want to be used to track. So you want to click the drop zone and then you want to select your image or video whatever it is. Click on it and then click apply clip and then it's going to load. And then if we go to the top here and we go to where it says track to group controls and then we go down to drop zone on and off. Right now it's unchecked, so we can't see the actual shades, but if you click on it, um, our image or video will show up here. So now if we go to the very bottom, we go to drop zone controls, and we go to scale, you can scale this down, or you can use these other tools here, which is kind of neat. So I'm going to move this out of the way over here, and I'm going to scale this by clicking on this and moving this, by the way, and then you can click this little circle to move it down. And this allows you to control the, the overall scale. However, if you want to change the drop zone scale, you have to go to the drop zone controls and then make this smaller. Okay, so just move this down. And if you want to rotate this, all you got to do is uh, use this one. So right now we're going to disable this just for the time being. So we're going to go into the drop zone on and off. I'm going to just disable that for now. I'm going to click on the track editor button. Click on that and a new window will show up. And what you want to do is you want to go into the shape options. You're going to have either a square or a circle oval shape. This pretty much depends on your subject. If you're going to be doing eyes, I would probably use the circular shape tool. Or you can go and just do the rectangle shape tool if you want. You're going to have the track controls. This one's track backwards. This one's to stop the tracking. And this is to, to uh, track forward. And you can reset this by clicking on these buttons over here. You have the track quality. You can increase this to 100%. The more you increase it, the longer it's going to take to track, but that's okay. I'm going to do around 80, enter. The tracking type. Now, this is pretty important. So right now, I want to focus on this for a second. Uh, so we have the gray area, and then we have a red square. I want to just click and drag this, this center white circle to whatever I want to track. Now, this can be a person. This can be a car, an animal, whatever. I'm going to click and drag this to this piece here. So now we're going to go to tracking type. Now I'm going to do the the uh, 
position, scale, and rotation. But what we want to do now is we want to start uh, tracking. So we're going to click this triangle button to start tracking. And it's going to do its magic and automatically track this point right here on, on her hat on this logo. And on the top left, you're going to have the tracking frame, the current frame that it's tracking. Right now it's at 57, 60 out of 159 that we've selected depending on how how long our video clip is and then if you want to stop the tracking all you got to do is click this little uh, square to stop the tracking and then you can uh, manually do it if you want so i'm going to let this finish and it's done you can see how many of these tracking points uh, this plugin added so now all we got to do is click export data and this will go ahead and export the data to the video clip so that then you can re-enable the uh, Dropbox zone or the drop zone to be able to position your effect into her her uh, face. So you can see how this works. It looks really good as you can see, but right now we can't see anything. So we're just gonna go into the tracked group controls. We're gonna click the drop zone on and off. Right now it's unchecked, just make sure it's checked. Then click this little circle, it's a shaded circle, and move it to where you want it to be. I want it to be around here. And let me move it a little bit left. Now, if I push play, this is what it's gonna look like. And you can see it looks really good and it looks really realistic. And from this point, let's say I want it to animate in and animate out. It's very simple. Just drag the time head to the beginning of the clip. And then what you wanna do is I'm going to actually disable the rotation box for now. It's a little distracting. I'm gonna go into the bottom and I'm gonna go into right here where it says track grouped controls. I'm gonna go into position X and Y. I'm gonna drag it off the screen. I'm gonna drag it all the way up here. Or you can just click and drag the Y axis up all the way out of the frame. Then add the keyframe and then go a couple of frames inwards. I'm gonna push play right there. And that's about nine frames, 10 frames. And then I'm gonna click and drag this down or up depending on where you want it to start. And I want to just move it right where it starts, around, around there. Or you can also adjust this to your liking. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to do there. So now if I go back and I push play, it's going to look like that, which looks super cool. And then if you wanted to like animate out, all you have to do is choose a spot where you want it to end. I'm going to go around, I don't know, like 10 frames again. And I'm going to add a next to a position X and Y. There's going to be a little plus icon. Add that again to add your keyframe. Go to the end of that clip and then drag the X. You can do the Y axis. Um, go one frame to the left to be able to see that though. And then move this down to your liking. It doesn't really, it really doesn't matter which way you want it to go. I'm gonna move it uh, to the left. And then now if I push play, it's gonna move to the left, which is so, so cool. I think you guys will like this and it just looks way more realistic than Final Cut Pro 10. If you guys found this tutorial helpful, for any of your projects, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on a video. And I'll catch you guys on my next video. Peace.